Hello everyone and welcome to week 43 of the weekly race guide. First up is race A where we're at the Goodwood Motor Circuit in Nissan Skylines. But how many laps are we doing? Let's have a look at the race details then. We are racing four laps here then at Goodwood. We have a grid start. I'd recommend using traction control just to be safe. Uh, we're on racing hard tyres, weirdly. It has a super amount of grip. Uh, and everything else is as normal, no fuel, no tyre wear, fixed setup, all good stuff. Um, an interesting race, a little bit carnage the cars are quite fast for Goodwood, so expect some people to run wide, go to Narnia, including me apparently, so uh, let's have a look at that now. Here we are then on the grid, it looks good doesn't it, R32, GTRs there. Old school, absolute old school. And now you just pick the colour you want. Obviously, the Grand Turismo will provide the car, so literally just jump in and race. Not one I particularly want to race again, to be honest with you. It is a bit sketchy. It's, uh, it's problems with the car and the track. Here we go then. So, track control, not hugely needed there. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry, just in case something weird happens. And trust me, in this video, you will see lots of weird stuff. Now, uh, we're heading towards Term 1. This is obviously where the carnage can begin. Fortunately, it doesn't, as a uh, drive on the left just goes a little bit wide there, and you see a penalty up ahead as well, and then there's a Swiss driver going quite slow, uh, we're going to have a bit of action with that Swiss driver later on as well, as they just cut off the, uh, the sweep there of um, Cliffhang, and uh, heading towards this right-hander then, obviously this is where the action's going to kick off really, you can see three wide up ahead, somebody then loses it, goes straight across the grass, comes back on, bam, here we go bowling, all sorts happening here, we're sort of trying to go through the middle, we sort of survived that, and uh, I sort of guessed that the Nissan on the inside there would go a little bit deep, so I was like, okay, I'll go for this. Uh, the Swiss decides he wants to just make his own room there, so forces me wide here, and then purposely runs me off the track, which is not very nice, mate, so I come back on and just force it over a little bit. Not very nice at all, really, in the grand scheme of it. Uh, not sure why he did that, but we continue on all the same as we overtake the Frenchman, and there's also a car on the left there, um, very, very sketchy to go through your wide here. Um, I may have caused a little bit of that slide. It got very tight. There was just enough room, but obviously just enough can get very sketchy uh, as we come through here. As a <laughs> chicane of death living up to his name there. Absolutely plows the French driver <laughs> as we uh, uh, head on to lap number two now. And if you look at that radar, we're about to get plowed by the French driver. Look at that, no braking, just ploughed into me, and off we go, off they go, off everybody goes, penalties galore, uh, and another French driver comes through there as well, so, as you see, a little bit carnage to be honest with you, so, we've gone a bit further on, if you look in the distance, in fact I'll zoom in for you there, there's a Swiss driver going to Narnia, <laughs> going to Narnia there, uh, I don't know how you go to Narnia there, but there we go, there's obviously many ways to get there. Uh, as you will see later on. Anyway, going to turn one. Uh, I wasn't using these markers, but I'm going to give you some markers here. You've got the uh, Marshall box on the left-hand side. Very good box, that. Now, with the with this car and this track combo, you notice that I'm just minimising my inputs here. Slight dabs of the brake. I'm trying to just let the car roll through the corner. This is because the car is very, very um, sketchy in terms of weight balance and weight transfer. So the less you do, the better. Again, for this corner here, the, uh, the Marshall box on the left-hand side, worthwhile using here it will just help you uh, again you're just going to brake a little bit there you see that i'm hardly going i did touch 100 brakes and as you head towards the left now this is a key one here the end of the tarmac that's what i always use in any car for this corner uh, basically use the end of the tarmac because then you're going to be on that side of the track and then you get a good line for this left now you use third and fourth gear mostly here it's got a very nice um, power curve as this car heading towards the right on the right hand side we have a massive crane which is for the tv cameras so Absolutely use that. No one's going to take that one out, are they? They're going to get themselves taken out to do that. Uh, and then into here, we're going to stay in third gear again. We're trying to reduce gear changes here and the weight transfer as much as we can. The weight transfer is so bad in this car. Now, last week, I talked about balance. This week, this combo is the about balance. Seriously is about balance. Uh, as we get a good run on the French driver here. Heading towards the right hander now. This is for Super GT's position. In we go. It's very tight. Oh, yes. Breaking zones, of course. On the left-hand side, there's some tarmac there. So the end of the tarmac, that's what I use. The cones are there as well. So obviously, it's a good reference all around if you use the cones or don't use the cones. Uh, so we come into here. And uh, they just turn in a little bit early. Nothing I can do there. Stay in third gear. Head towards the chicane of death. 
uh, the second one here and uh, use a Marshall box again. First one is of course in race C. Uh, that's one we originally know as the Chicane of Death but uh, the Marshall box there, staying third gear again, trying to avoid hitting it and I maintain 70 miles an hour there. That's what you really want to do at this circuit. So what we're going to do, we're going to fast forward on because you want to see me go to Narnia, don't you? I know you do. So let's head up towards this right hander where I get it a little bit wrong. I go a little bit deep here. So I try and pull it back, hit the brakes and off, off, off I go to Narnia <laughs> and hit the barrier, which doesn't really help that matters that much. So yeah, uh, full on Narnia moment there, eh, hey, folks? Anyway, we come back on the track and uh, we head towards the start finish line. We finish seventh. Not the greatest race in the world, I'd say. A lot of carnage on lap one. A uh, very tricky car to handle. One I would avoid, if I'm honest, if I was you. Uh, you're going to get some SR downs potentially here, so uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but that's it for race A. Let's head towards uh, race B now, where we head to Australia. Where we are in Group 3 Machinery at Bathurst, of course. It's the only Australian track in the game. Uh, let's have a look at the race details then. We are racing three laps here at Bathurst. It is a rolling start and we are on racing hard tyres and the usual stuff. No fuel, no tyre wear, thick setup, all fine and dandy. Unlike like the race, which is way too short and it's just, I just don't like it. You've got two places to overtake basically and then they obviously got the mountain. So it makes the race feel even shorter because you don't really have many opportunities to overtake. So we'll jump to the race, I'll talk you through a lap guide of course as always, uh, and you can have a look at one of the funniest penalties I've ever received. Here we are then at the start of the grid, as always Group 3, I forgot to mention this, pick whatever car you like, you know, it's all a bit of fun at the end of the day in the Group 3 races, they're all relatively close in the grand scheme of balance of performance, as we set off a lot Peugeot RCZ in front of me, now that's one car I probably wouldn't pick here because it's very slow on the uh, straights, and we have two straights. Uh, but technically we've got three I suppose, you've got the start finish straight, we've got the first straight going towards the mountain and one coming away from it. But anyway, let's kick off here, so you might want to use traction control, you might not, it's up to you, there's no tie attempts to worry about, so uh, really you're just taking the corner as you would do in time trial. Heading towards turn one of course, I will go through a proper lap guide shortly, uh, just be careful about outbreaking yourself as I do here and nearly hit the Peugeot. Peugeot goes deep anyway, I'm not sure whether that was avoidance action or not, but uh, we're going to overtake the Peugeot now, happy days. Uh, as we head down this straight, and this is what I mean by uh, picking, not picking the Peugeot for example, we've just flown by it like nobody's business there, and look at we're dropping it now for days, uh, as we head now towards the mountain, uh, in towards the right hand there we go, just uh, stuck behind this driver, and this is what I was on about in the intro of this race, you essentially just get stuck behind somebody going up the mountain, you can't overtake, so the race seems even shorter than it is because you're sort of stuck in a train with no possible actions really, a little bit of lag there, now I was suffering um, I wasn't suffering with like, I was, he was suffering with like quite a lot of she um, throughout this race. Uh, maybe it contributed to what is coming up shortly, I don't know, as we head over the mountain now. And as I say, you, you're just stuck here, which is why it's not really that fun of a race as we hit the barrier. Not quite as hard, but you could, I could have gone for the move there, but it's very dangerous to do so. You will see people go for it with three laps, as there's not really many chances to overtake as we start heading down the mountain now. Be very careful about cutting at this left hand too much. If you nail the cut, you will get a penalty. It's weird, I know, but it's, I didn't do it in this race, but it's just to let you know there. Uh, as the Italian goes round there, I think there's a slight tap due to that lag. There wasn't actually a tap there, technically. Uh, as we head out of uh, that left hander now, and we're going to be all over the back of this McLaren, the Aston's got good top end speed here. You're about to see it just launch itself uh, forward as we start to head towards Stiggy Boy. See what happens here in the convertible there. And I didn't want to pick that. And the convertible was up there in time trial. Unfortunately, we don't get the move done there. I was a bit scared about being knocked off, so I backed out of it. But check this out. You're about to see the weirdest thing ever. So we go for a run here. So we just, you know, run into the back of him accidentally. And I forced another car off the track. What? Okay. Spot where I run a car off the track here, folks. Can you see it? No, I can't have <laughs> I forced another car off the track. No, I accidentally ran a little bit wide. How have I forced somebody off the track? <laughs> oh, the penalty system never fails to amaze me. And once again, it has certainly amazed me once again. Oh my word, how hilarious is that? Anyway, we're going to head up the mountain. We're going to take the penalty, of course, which is actually more than a second because we get absolutely dropped there for days. 
that time going up to the uh, Italian there. So I have changed the brightness a little bit. I can't remember if I've mentioned this already. Uh, because for some reason my Elgato's capturing in super bright mode. I have no idea why and I need to figure it out. But uh, So if the quality looks a bit weird, that's the reason why. Now check out this French driver. Look what they do. I've never seen anyone do this. They hit that barrier on the right. <laughs> Who does that? I've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> like, how distracted? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Anyway, we get past them anyway, and they drive very que uh, queen, clean to come back from that. Heading towards turn one then, a uh, brake marker is the marshal on the right. Obviously, depending on the car you pick, is depending on that, how close you get to that marshal on the right side, or photographer, whoever it is, on the right side. But that's my marker usually. Just go a little bit deep here though in the Aston. It obviously carries a lot of speed there as we then leave turn one. We've got this long, long straight. Obviously, this is no taking opportunity, but in towards the right-hander can get a little bit tricky. So just be careful of that. Anyway, uh, we're heading towards the braking zone now. You, you all should know where I'm gonna, what I'm going to use here. This piece of tarmac on the left-hand side is a beautiful, beautiful marker. Break it start of it if you need to. If you had a lot of slipstream, break it towards the end of it. If you have no slipstream and you're in a handling car, uh, make sure you really get on the inside here. I use a bit too much of the curb there, but make sure you get as close to that curb as possible uh, as we then head up to the left. Here you're just going to sort of like dab the brakes, slow the car down a little bit, and then you're just going to threshold brake all the way to the uh, corner. Got to slow down a little bit here as the uh, all tightens up here. We're going to actually go for a move here. Now I'm going to point out a tree. Now why do I point out this tree? This is a turning marker. It's one I use quite often when I'm time trialing Bathurst. Literally, when the tree is on the right side of your screen, when you're in the McLaren sort of position on the left, just turn in. You should make the corner happy days. Just a little trick there for you as uh, we then head up on top of the mountain now down and round so make sure you click the curb on the left there now i'm going to stop it again here this is not actually a brake marker but lift here so the reason you lift is to stop the car uh, the car's weight on the front being so light obviously if you lift the weight bounces itself towards the front again and it means the car stays flat over the crest of the hill rather than lifts up and you go flying off into the gravel so just be careful of that as you head down here you're going to use that uh, audi r8 sign woohoo audi r8 shout out uh, to head down the hill and you're going to trail brake a little bit so you're going to brake and just uh, also touch the accelerator where you need to and McLaren hits the GTR there. Uh, obviously a mistake there because they let them go which is oh, fair enough, people make mistakes, it's all good stuff. They also get a 0.5 penalty, I'm assuming that is for the contact actually. Oh no, it would be for the cut actually going down the hill. My, my bad, my bad there. So they get the left a little bit wrong here. You want to keep it tight there uh, and breaking into that corner, sorry. You're, d you're doing what you did going up the hill, you're just breaking a little bit beforehand, straightening the car up and brake again. So we're on the um, right side of the McLaren, they take their penalty, and now we're going to catch Godzilla faster than the speed of sound here. I've no idea why we caught them so quick, but happy days down the inside, they actually give this up, get very scared of obviously going on the outside there. And uh, for the brake mark for this left-hander, use the V in that Signavent sponsor thing. That's what I use, uh, it's a weird marker I know, but the V is very easy to spot, so that's what I use. Uh, so I go to third gear in the Aston, uh, and I go through there. Now, if you're wondering about brake balance, I always get asked about brake balance. Make sure you check out the description. It's all in there. Race A, race B, race C, the car, and the brake balance. Oh, yeah, last brake marker, of course. The tree on the right-hand side. Uh, perfect brake marker. It's the one I used, if you remember, when we had this at night. Uh, I made the, the camera brighter, essentially. Maybe that's why it's so bright, actually. 500 IQ head just appeared. I need to check that out, actually. But we're going to head towards the line now. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of the race. No, I'm not a fan of this one, to be honest. It really needs to be longer or, or, or you know, just, yeah, more strategy involved. But that's going to be it for race B. Let's head to race C, then, with the chicane of death once again. Dragon Trail, Seaside then, and we are in a Group 4 machinery this time. So, yes, the FFs are going to be strong here because it is quite a power track. Um, but let's have a look at the race details, first of all, as to why they're probably not the best car to use. So we are racing 10 laps here at Dragon Trail, Seaside. It is a rolling start. You have a choice of two tyres here, racing medium or the required racing hard tyres, which obviously brings in a little bit of strategy. Fuel usage times three and tire wear times seven. So with that tire wear being times seven, you don't necessarily want to use the FF cars. In fact, I would advise against it and go with some of the other cars available because you've got a mixture of strategies here. If you do go for an FF car, I would recommend using the mediums and the hards. However, I go for the non-stop in this race because actually you lose so much time in the pits I think a non-stop actually is the better strategy. Let's jump to the race then, uh, and let's have a look what happened, and also a lap guide. 
Here we are then, the start of the grid. Look at that, we have an Aston Martin, now TT, now TT, and then the Peugeot RCZ, and then the Viper. So yeah, lots of different cars. As I say, the FFs, I don't think are the strongest here. Um, I went with the Jaguar F-Type because I figured this would be quite strong. Now, this is actually technically my second race. The first race ended after lap one because a parcel arrived during the race, which is very annoying. Um, so, yeah, this is my second race. Let's see what happens, though. So, we start on the corner, which is very annoying. So, I did use traction control there. Helped me around fine, to be honest. And I'm starting on the hard tyre because I'm going to do the non-stop strategy. I figured that would be the best. Um, as we then head towards the start finish line here and we actually start the race down. So we are going to warm up the tyres. Obviously with tyre wear you have temperature in the tyres so you really need to get it up as fast as you can especially with the harder tyres. Obviously they have less grip. Uh, heading into here you can see the less grip as we go for a little bit of an oversteer moment. However we do catch it and we can carry on racing here. So you can see lots of uh, cars side by side up ahead. Obviously different tyre compounds, different uh, drive trains of cars. It very much it bulks up very quickly in the early stages in this race as you can see up ahead the Aston fighting with the Viper fighting with the Audi lots and lots of different action happening ahead I do think the Porsche might be a good shot actually but it didn't appear to do very well as you see a couple of people get penalties there as we took it into the S's here Porsche just gets on the inside of that Jaguar there as uh, we then hit the right hander and I'm going to head up in towards his left uh, quite easy corners to be honest the cars in group 4 have a lot of grip there through the S's nothing to really worry about as we head down here though, um, if you notice on the radar behind, I'm about to get tapped from behind and then hit the brick behind there. Um, originally, I thought that was my fault, because my phone also rang at the same time, which is why I backed off here completely, because I thought it was my fault. Looking at it now, I didn't. It wasn't my fault at all. I broke in the perfect uh, manner in the perfect time, and I just got rammed from behind by the Spaniard as uh, we head through the chicane of death for the first time. Oh, Neo Ghost Hamilton there. Just, just clips the barrier there so I had to break a little bit of course breaking for the uh, chicane not the wisest thing to do but I had to do it there just to be on the safe side as we head towards the last corner now breaking a little bit early here because as I say I was a bit concerned with the fact that I hit somebody so obviously that plays in your mind a little bit make sure it doesn't as a Porsche goes to Narnia with a little bit of a spin there yeah I do avoid those curbs and uh, the car bottom bottoming out and uh, so Hamilton in front is going to actually let me pass there notice the indicators come up happy days Let's us through on the left hand side. We're actually going to go into the track guide here for you very early on in the race. So you're going to use the start of that curb essentially. Um, or depending on which car you are in, of course, and the tyre compound, that's your marker. So obviously if you're on hards uh, and you've got slipstream, you might want to break a bit earlier than that. Obviously that's just your marker, a guide to how you could do this circuit. Make sure you get your tyre on the inside of that curb, not to drag me around a little bit. Happy days with that little tip as well. Uh, heading towards this right hand, you're going to lift a little bit to get the car turned in. And uh, you notice a little lift there. And then on the left, you've got two pieces of gravel with grass in the middle. That is your marker. So you break in there somewhere. Pick pick it out. Maybe start to extend it as much as you can until you get to a point where you're out breaking yourself. And then try and clip the curb on the right hand side. That way you know you've hit the apex and accelerate out this corner. The next marker is the most common marker I use at this circuit. It's the left hand side, of course. It's the orange barrier there. Very easy marker to spot. You're going into the left hander. It's on the left, happy days. It's where your eye line uh, is and you can chuck it in. Now I say in fifth on this lap, in the Jag, it's probably better in fourth, to be honest, and then going to fifth later on, you see a little bit of understeer there because of that. But even so, we don't lose a massive amount of time as we head now down towards the uh, hairpin. And uh, you notice know, the hazards come on, I wasn't sure what that was for, but as we head down here, I broke a little bit early, but again, the start of that kerb, a huge, huge marker to use that, because in your eye line once again, try not to go too much on it, I keep finding that if I use it, I, my braking is extended for some reason, rather than shortened, um, but just a bit of info, with actually a little bit of lag there from the Brit as well. So, nice and easy so far this lap, lots of easy markers to spot as we go through the chicane of death. Now, the key thing with the chicane of death, you don't want to break, as we saw up front, is you just got to be careful of that curb. If you hit it the wrong way, it can really fire you airborne, uh, and you're suddenly on two wheels. Uh, I'm not sure you can go on one wheel, but just a bit of info there, so you can end up on two wheels. As you head towards the last corner, of course, again, start the curb. Sometimes use the 100 meter board, I'm using the start the curb here, and I'm actually braking before that. I kept finding I was out braking myself when using the start that curb in this car. In the Audi TT, for example, I imagine you do use the start that curb. So we'll just come through there, and we get up another position, happy days, or another couple, because somebody died temporarily at that chicane of death. 
So we advance a bit further on here. Chuck it into the left. Get very close to this Viper now. And obviously we're, we're having to recover from quite a bad start there with that contact on lap one. Um, so through the left we go. Let's see what we can do here then. Um, so add TT and a Viper. So very much different cars. The Viper whacks on the indicator to let me go to the right. So thank you very much there, Bear. Uh, as we come into here now, I'm just making sure I stop it on the apex that we do. Uh, and the uh, Britain, the Jag, is also trying to follow through there as well. So some smart driving, maybe saw the indicator for. Oh, I'll take advantage of that. Doesn't quite work out though. The Viper does stay in P15, uh, and we're all over the back of this Audi TT. So again, you just got to be careful here. You notice how they ran a little bit too deep there. They just clipped their barrier. We're going to take that position up into P13 then I'm looking for some hopefully not unlucky for us but let's find out as you see arrows for days on that radar down on the right hand side so we leave a lot of room on the inside there a lot a lot of room uh, but that's just to make sure that nobody dies us and they've got loads of room there uh, fortunately nobody does all clean driving happy days you see Berto Dave comes in the pits now this is why you don't pit because Berto Dave was very much up there in terms of the grid and he's still not quite at the pitch yet and we look behind us just to check and there he is miles behind so all the traffic you have to deal with if you switch tires it's a huge amount of effort to do whereas you can make your way through the field on a no stop which is what i think is the preferred strategy here to be honest as we about advance a bit further on you notice we're on lap five now and we are making our way through the field uh but dave just behind us there four seconds so significant there as we come through this right hander uh another ad ct hitting the bike that's the spaniard that hit me earlier actually i think uh as we continue on round the spaniard there as uh, we approach them at Audi TT. As I say, I don't think it's the car of choice, personally. I think most people have seen it at the top of the leaderboards on time trial and picked it, whereas they've not really thought about the tyre wear, which is huge in the grand scheme of it for that Audi TT, I think. Um, especially later on in the race with the understeer that you'll have, where you had understeer in this car, so the understeer in that should be there. I don't know, though. That's just my opinion. That's what I feel um, uh, about the cars and which cars you should pick. I wouldn't pick the Audi TT here. I'd definitely pick a Power FR car. Notice a raid on the radar there. I saw that happening, so I sort of tried to give room there, which is why I ran a little bit deep to avoid contact once again. So up ahead, we have just Dio and uh, Ju Ibifa. They both watch this channel, so shout out to you folks. And they have an absolute ding dong battle. We advance a little bit further on here, where just Dio goes for an absolute dive and a half. I tried to be opportunistic there on Ibifa. It didn't quite work out to back out of it there. Um, but yeah, these have a ding-dong battle, so it allows us to catch up up to that point that we've just caught up to. Uh, and you can see they're still going at it side by side here um, as uh, IP goes a little bit deep there. And uh, we're going to do the cutback here because it makes the most sense. They're FF cars, they're going to understeer, which is why we took that line and why we chose that line. Uh, as we head down towards the right hand, and now you can see all sorts on that radar. So uh, we're obviously going to give plenty of space here. The ADCTs can break very, very late. Uh, but some good racing here between them both. But we get two positions. We're up into Super GT's position. P number six. Happy days there, folks. Uh, we've got a few laps. Maybe we can get a bit further up the grid as uh, we continue on through the chicane of death. Please survive. Happy days. Survived. And uh, the leader comes in the pits. So what's on the mediums? Going to go into the hards. So obviously being in the lead actually helped out there because you could just... Go away basically whereas in the in the pack you get stuck in all sorts of battles you see uh, just Dio goes for the move down the inside um, so back down to p6 maybe somebody else pit there because I'm sure I was in uh, yeah I can't remember the positions now uh, you notice Ruben slightly tapped me there he apologized for that afterwards I think there was a move between Berto Dave and Ruben and then I just ended up involved in it there um, but we're gonna fast forward now catch up to just Dio here in the S's uh, and this is a fantastic end to the race actually it's really good racing here um, so back up into P5, happy days, and uh, we're looking to try and get the move into P4. You notice how much understeer there is in that Audi TT. Remember, that Audi TT has been in the pits, has been in the pits. We haven't. So, you know, just keep that in mind with this race. Really do keep that in mind as we come through the right-hander here. And uh, we're just going to get this done now. It's a bit sketchy to be on the outside of an FF car, of course, but uh, just the racing clean as a whistle there as uh, we head through the chicane now. Happy days, survive, survive, survive. Oh, no, two wheels. Notice how we got two wheels then, boom. Hit the barrier, gonna lose the position now. So that's that critical thing I mentioned about with the chicane of death, avoid two wheels at all costs. Generally speaking, if you lift, as you just hit the curb, you should be fine. 
Um, if you are accelerating, that's when it's gonna basically chuck the car up a little bit. And it's the same as at Bath Horse. Bath, Bath Horse? What's Bath Horse? Bath Hearse, um, where you're on the crest of the hill on top of the mountain. You, li you lift beforehand so the weight settles on the car, so it's a balanced weight rather than all the weight being at the back because you're accelerating. It's that same thought process. Heading towards turn one then, we've just made the move on Josh Dio again. Happy days. You can see the fight up ahead between Small Pup and GT Zocker there. Uh, they're fighting side by side. GT Zocker streams, by the way, if you're interested um, in checking out another stream of the Daily Races, of course. Uh, and of course, here he is, is going to be streaming um, straight after this, I think, or around this time as well. Um, so uh, check out here he is as well as we come through the chicane of death. We've called up to Zocker in left and right so Zocca I think is doing the non-stop as well don't quote me on that Zocca would have to confirm that heading down towards the last corner are we gonna get the move done here we're in the slipstream we're three temps off it's gonna get very close right so we take a wide line in here to try and get a good run out the corner look how close we get now here we go boys and girls it's the final count I mean run da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 no, we're not going to do it. Just miss out there on a podium, but a good race all the same. So shout out to uh, everyone I raced in that one. There was no dirty driving, unlike um, earlier on in the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed that one. I quite like race C. Race B I hate. Race A is a bit carnage, so race C is the only one I would do this week personally. But it's up to you. Uh, as I say, here he is, is streaming around about now. So if you go and check that out, GT Zocker also streams. So you can check out Zocker's channel in the description. But that's going to be it for me now, folks. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and make sure you subscribe if you want to keep up with the weekly race guides.